Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another topical deep dive here on the Core Cutters News Channel. And so this week we wanted to take a look at the world of smart TVs. Those are the TV models that have streaming app support built right into them. The idea there is you don't need a separate box from, say, Roku, Amazon, Apple, etc. So they could be a convenient choice for cord cutters and streamers at a variety of price points. And honestly, it's getting harder and harder to find a non-smart TV these days, so let's explore a bit, shall we? And in this video, we're going to highlight some of the reasons why smart TVs TVs make sense, as well as some of their disadvantages, and we'll also highlight some of the biggest names in smart TVs right now. If you're in the market for a new TV and you're considering one with smart capabilities built right in, we hope you find this one useful. This is the state of smart TVs in 2021. Why smart TVs can be a great choice. First off, let's talk about why smart TVs might be a good choice for your next TV purchase. And perhaps the biggest perk to smart TVs is the convenience. Since smart TVs pack in some sort of streaming platform, you don't have to worry about hooking up an external device like a Roku Ultra or Apple TV to access your favorite apps. And that can be a great space saver since you don't have to dedicate shelf space for a separate device and you likely have fewer remote controls to deal with as well. And honestly, despite having access to an absurd amount of streaming devices in our household, we still use LG's built-in webOS smart TV platform for the vast majority of our streaming needs and that's because of the convenience, and that includes using just the one remote control. However, there are still instances where we'll use other devices to access certain apps, which leads us to why smart TVs sometimes aren't the best choice. Why smart TVs can be a not so great choice. So yes, smart TVs are everywhere these days, and there's no shortage of choices on the market from a wide range of manufacturers. But there are instances where a given smart TV might not be the best choice for your particular streaming needs. For one, just like their dedicated device siblings, smart TV platforms all have their inherent strengths and weaknesses, and that can include things like varying levels of app support or performance issues. Sometimes pairing software with lower cost, lower performance TV hardware can result in a less than pleasant viewing experience. And for me personally, that's most often when I turn to an external device rather than my LG OLED's built-in webOS software. Certain apps like Sling or Pluto TV, for example, simply run better and more smoothly on other hardware that I have access to. And just like external streaming devices, smart TV performance might be concerned over time. So maybe your smart TV software worked just fine for the first few years, but as apps have gotten more complex, overall performance might feel slower over time. In that case, you might feel a need to upgrade, or if the TV itself is doing just fine as, you know, a TV, maybe resorting to an external streaming device to serve up those apps. And you may also find yourself in a situation where there's a specific TV with specs and performance you really like, but you're not a fan of the built-in smart TV software. Conversely, you could find yourself really liking a specific smart TV platform like Roku TV or Fire TV, for example, but you can't quite find a supported TV model with the hardware specs you're looking for. So you might find yourself buying a smart TV more for its hardware capabilities and just bypassing the built-in software altogether and going with a Roku Ultra, Nvidia Shield TV Pro, or any number of external devices instead. And with all of that being said, let's take a look at some of the top names in smart TVs right now, starting with a brand that should be very familiar to streaming fans out there. Roku TV include. Of course, any discussion about smart TVs should include Roku TV, the platform that combines the well-known Roku streaming software with TVs from a variety of manufacturers, including Hisense, Philips, RCA, Sharp, TCL, and several others. One of the biggest perks of the Roku TV platform is the sheer variety on offer. You can choose from a number of models across a wide range of price points, and they each feature access to Roku's tried and true user interface and impressive app support. So if you've maybe used Roku's dedicated streaming devices in the past, moving to a Roku TV smart TV should offer a pretty seamless transition. On the downside, despite solid TV maker support, you might find it tough to find Roku software built into a TV with the exact specs you're looking for. And that can include, say, high-end OLED models, which often have some of the best picture quality currently available. If you have your site set on a fancy OLED model, you won't be able to find one with Roku software built in right now. Of course, if you still want that Roku user interface and app support, the company will happily sell you a standalone device, but as far as Roku TVs go, your best bet is in the lower cost to mid-range televisions. As far as specific models go, there are several to choose from, but we suggest taking a look at Hisense's affordable line of R6 series Roku TVs or TCL 6 series 4K QLED displays as a starting point. Fire TV like Roku TV, Amazon's Fire TV platform also enjoys some solid TV maker support with companies like JVC, Toshiba, and Westinghouse on board. 
And also like Roku TV, the major perk here is pairing Amazon's popular Fire TV platform with well-known TV manufacturers, so you get the familiar Fire TV interface along with the platform's solid app support. Also like Roku TV, the Fire TV models on the market now are mainly LCD options rather than the higher-end OLED displays. Now to be fair, there is a German TV maker that does produce an OLED TV with Fire TV software built in, but here in the US you're mainly going to find LCD models on offer. And those often range from low-cost budget models to mid-range and higher-end non-OLED TVs. And again, there are plenty of models to choose from, but we'd recommend starting your Fire TV search with Toshiba's C350 line, which includes 43, 50, and 55-inch models. Android TV Another smart TV platform with solid TV maker support comes from Google. It's the company's Android TV platform, which you'll find support for from a number of familiar names, including ones we've already discussed here. So if you're currently shopping for an Android-powered smart TV, you can select models from makers like Panasonic, Philips, Sharp, Sony, TCL, Toshiba, and several others. Besides Android TV's robust app support, another thing the smart TV platform has going for it is support for higher-end displays. So if you are looking for an OLED TV with Android software built in, you have some choices, courtesy of Sony and its growing line of OLED TVs. Now, like most OLEDs on the market, these aren't exactly budget price models, but if you want top shelf display quality and Android TV software, you definitely have some options. Of course, you can also choose from more budget oriented models as well as mid range options that balance price and features. Overall, we'd suggest including TCL's 4 series in your search if you're looking for an affordable Android TV. And maybe check out Sony's A80J if you're looking for an OLED option. Tizen. And then we get into smart TV platforms that are tied to specific manufacturers. For instance, there's Samsung, who makes a wide, wide range of TVs at all manner of price points and leverages the Tizen platform for its smart TV models. And like other smart TV platforms, Tizen offers up solid app support, and Samsung's been working hard to increase its value as a content hub for all your streaming needs. So yes, manufacturer choices are more limited than, say, Fire TV, Android TV, or Roku TV, but there is a ton of choice within Samsung's lineup. At the more affordable end, we suggest checking out the AU8000 line. And for folks looking for high-end displays, the company's QN90A QLED line is a great place to start. Web OS. LG. LG is another major TV maker that's been going its own route as far as smart TV software goes, and in this case the company uses WebOS for its LCD and OLED displays. Like Tizen, you'll find solid app support, though perhaps not as robust as you might find on Roku or Fire TV. For instance, Pluto TV only recently made an appearance on WebOS TVs. So like other platforms, it pays to make sure your favorite apps are supported ahead of time. But as far as hardware options go, LG similarly offers a wide range of choices from low-cost models to ultra-high-end displays. At the budget end, check out the UP7000 series of LCD TVs. If you're looking for something more advanced, the C1 line of OLED TVs offers impressive specs and picture quality. Smartcast. Last but not least, we have Vizio and its SmartCast line of TVs. And again, like Samsung and LG, there is solid app support to be found here, especially when it comes to big name services like Netflix, Hulu, and Prime Video. However, there's currently no HBO Max app available for SmartCast, for example, though Vizio says you can get around that by loading up the app on your mobile device and then casting it to your TV via Apple AirPlay or Google Chromecast. And you might also find some smaller apps aren't quite yet supported on the platform just yet. We often post updates on corecuttersnews.com about popular apps arriving on smart TV platforms, and those sometimes come months after a particular app has been on services like Roku or Fire TV. So keep an eye out for app support updates for sure. On the bright side, SmartCast is available on Vizio's expansive range of TVs, ranging from budget 1080p displays to higher-end LCDs and, more recently, OLED TVs as well. On the lower end, take a look at the company's V-series and M-series of TVs. Meanwhile, the high-end has options like 55 or 65-inch Vizio OLED TVs to choose from. Wrapping it all up. So there you go. We hope that sheds some light on the current landscape of smart TVs. And as you can see, it's often a balancing act. Sometimes the platform with the best app support might not be available in the highest end TV. Conversely, that high end luxury price display might not come back in the streaming platform you're most comfortable with. 
In the end, it's really up to you, your wants and needs, and of course, your budget. Hopefully, you can strike the right balance when it comes time for a new TV. And don't forget, even with smart TVs and their built-in software, you can always tack on an external standalone streaming device if your needs change later. You might lose out on some of the convenience perks, like using one remote for everything or not having to deal with HDMI inputs as often, but it's important to note that you don't necessarily have to feel locked into a particular smart TV software. That being said, if you're ready for a new centerpiece for your living room or looking for a space-saving model for the bedroom or office, we hope we've given you a solid starting point here. And as always, thank you all for watching. If you haven't done so already, please do consider clicking on those like and subscribe buttons down below. Those really do help us out. And until next time, my name is Philip Palermo. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you all next time. Take care.